स्कूटर Pain was in the right leg. Acute on onset. Continuous character. Continuous in continuous uh, in character. Non radiating. Aggravated on movement. He also had injury over head. Mild and mild abrasion over bilateral hand. Ah, uh, there was history of loss of consciousness for about one hour. No history of bleeding from ear, nose, and mouth. No history of abnormal body movement. No history of vomiting, no history of urinary retention, and he was operated. And today is second post-operative day. Right. My past history. Uh, in my past history, no history of similar illness in the past. No history of chronic disease like TB, asthma, hypertension. In my personal history, he has no history of smoking and alcohol intake. He consumes mixed diet. In family history, no history of chronic disease in the family. Okay. And and in drug and allergic history, no known history of drug and allergic history to food. And in my general survey. My passion is lying supine on position, conscious. Okay, now well, just well, just wait, sorry. just wait for some time. Now coming to the history, yeah. we'll just have uh, two words regarding the history and your uh, uh, diagnosis with respect to your uh, history, whatever you have told. Okay, so as you said, this is a young patient, and uh, there was yes, a sir. history of trauma, which is a significant one. so when there is a significant trauma and he was unable to uh, move from the site of trauma is it true uh, yes sir yeah that means there is a significant trauma which has made his extremity which is weight bearing extremity some sort of injury which is enabling him to bear weight on his affected limb isn't it so yes, that sir. means there is a significant history there is a possibility that there is some uh, fracture or a dislocation whatever in the lower limb which is not allowing him to bear weight on the affected limb isn't it so what is your uh, clinical impression with respect to the history uh, my clinical impression is uh, proximal uh, i i suspect three thing three uh, differential diagnosis sir in my differential yeah. diagnosis i suspect uh, tib proximal tibia fracture and okay proximal tibia plateau fracture i uh, proximal fibula fracture or fracture okay. of the you know sac of the tibia and there might be ligament injury as well okay see there is a pain the patient complains of there is a uh, pain in the particular point he points out that it is here that means there is something something has happened to either soft tissue or bony or ligamental injury to in that part so as you said patient is pointing towards the upper part of the leg so you have to find out whatever bone bony structures are there or a joint joint is near joint is is knee joint okay so either of either knee is injured any fracture or a ligamental injury around the knee or fracture of the proximal part of the tibia or fibula okay correct right proceed okay sir yeah my patient is lying supine on position conscious well oriented to time place in person average build and cannula uh, on left hand For the examination, there was no pallor, no ichthyrus, no palpable lymph node, no coilo 
no no kia no cyanosis no chlorophyll no edema well hydrated okay on systemic examination on cns examination uh, the eye response was four verbal response was five and motor response was six and he was well oriented and the gcs was 15 by 15 and cns examination was entire on cvs examination uh, s1 s2 uh, was hard and there was no any more more on respiratory examination normal vesicular uh, sound was hard and other other uh, respiratory examination are intact on poor abdo abdomen uh, it is soft non tender no palpable organ 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 organomegaly say now okay, uh, because it's a significant trauma case your general survey and systemic examinations are most important in this case. Okay. In general survey, you are assessing his uh, central nervous system, his uh, uh, chest, his abdomen, and his uh, genitourinal system, and his spine. All these things are assessed in a general examination, and which is as which will which will be. Uh, we are helping in a diagnosis with the systemic examination if you have any doubt. A systemic examination like CNS, you have to examine his conscious right from the consciousness to his examination of general examination of whether he is able to move his liver, lower limbs or any sensation like central nervous system, definitely uh, very important in any traumatic case. And uh, your uh, uh, CNS is most important with respect to uh, any vascular injury or for a post uh, for a uh, posting for a surgery. Uh, Preoperative analysis also important or any associated uh, anomaly may be there in the central nervous. I mean, uh, uh, it is a uh, cardiovascular system. Okay, that also should be, should be assessed in the systemic examination. Respiratory system in a traumatic case, most important is whether is there any injury to the uh, uh, chest rib uh, cage. With respect to the rib cage, again, whether it is injuring the pleura, injuring the uh, lungs, or any, is there any collection in the pleural cavity, all these things you should be able to assess in a respiratory examination. Parabdomen is also very important here. Examination of the parabdomen, whether there is any guarding, is there any collection in, in the uh, abdominal cavity, or is there any suspected injury to any major uh, organs in the uh, abdomen as well as in the pelvis. And pelvic examination, your uh, compression test of uh, both iliac wing. It is most important to rule out any fractures around the pelvis and in with the respect to any other consequences following the fracture. That also is very important. And catheterization, uh, police catheterization is most important because cause is a traumatic case. We don't know this uh, uh, amount of trauma he has sustained because it's a road traffic accident, isn't it? So you should be very, very careful. Examination of general and systemic examination is most important in a traumatic case. Okay, right. Proceed. May I proceed, sir? Yeah. Proceed. On my local examination, uh, on look, I found right leg elevated above the pillow, slab is placed above knee, posterior to neck of, meta, neck of metatarsal, uh, right lower limb flex at hip, hip at knee, and ankle neutral. On field, uh, there was tenderness present at proximal leg. Okay. What's your inspectory findings? Inspectory findings here? What are the inspectory findings? Because now, as uh, it is a po second post-operative day, you need to, I think you can remove it, 
remove your slab or whatever is applied, you can find out what is there inside because it's a post-operative. Pre-operative, it is difficult to, to remove the slab. You can just remove the slab and you can inspect. So what was done? What, where is the, uh, any swelling, any ecchymosis, any, because it's a post-operative, any uh, surgical scar, surgical wound, which is sutured, all these things you should be able to inspect. Okay, and is there any edema around the uh, injured part and distal to the red part? These are all most important thing. Okay, and finally the movement of the toes that has to be inspected. Okay, right. this is because these are most important. Inspectory finding in any 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 orthopedic patient is most important rather than palpation. Because here you, you can assess the any complications following the trauma or following surgery that also can be assessed here. Like in complications like infection, uh, pus draining of pus, any hematoma formation, any vascular injuries, any deep in thrombosis, all these uh, signs, <laughs> inspectory speeches, findings can be assessed. Okay. Right, now coming to after look, it is feel, palpation. Yes. Okay, yeah. On palpation, there was tenderness present at right proximal, right proximal leg. Right, yeah. See, whenever you say tenderness in a right proximal leg, you should specify which part of the leg. Because proximal leg means what? It contains upper part of the shaft of the uh, tibia and fibula, condyles of the tibia, medial condyle, lateral condyle, tibial tuberosity, okay? And posteriorly, you can, you have uh, knee joint and popliteal fossa also. So all these things you should be able to identify. You can just say, don't generalize the word proximal leg, okay? You anatomical uh, landmark and one more thing you have forgotten is upper end of the fibula, fibula head. Yes. You should palpate. Okay. Right. Good. On movement, on right right leg, uh, movement was restricted at knee joint due to slap. On left leg, normal movement at hip, knee and ankle joint. Okay. So, movement is also one of the most important finding here because it is post-operative, you can remove the uh, slab and try to move because it is, you said it is a second post-operative day. Provided pa uh, patient was uh, performed any intervention like any in uh, open reduction and uh, internal fixation or closed reduction internal fixation if the fixation is stable you can mobilize the knee joint and you can remove the slab and you can examine it okay so whenever you are exam performing the movement if it is not painful you can try to move the knee joint any trauma around the knee joint, around any joint, here it is knee joint, you need to assess the movements of the uh, joint which is nearby to the fracture. Okay? Sometimes it is difficult because of trauma. If it is trauma is very near to the joint, like it's a condylar fractures, there may be difficulty in moving the limb. But your main aim is to assess the movement of the joint which is near to the fracture site. Okay? Right. Proceed. May I proceed, sir? Okay, sir. Yeah, sure. On, on digital neurovascular system examination, on the capillary refilling time was three seconds and dorsal spirit artery was palpable and there was sensation over first wave space and dorsum of lateral aspect of foot was intact. Yeah, because now it is a acute trauma case and it's post-operative case. 
your assessment of vascularity and the distal part of the limb is most important because we don't know there may be possibility of compartment syndrome it can happen pre operatively also or post operatively also what is compartment syndrome the raise in the intra compartmental pressure there are compartments in the leg anterior posterior lateral anterolateral in anterolateral it is superficial as deep in posterior also superficial posterior and deep posterior all these compartments are differentiated by intermuscular septum isn't it these compartments are called osseo uh, cutaneous and osseo it is one side it is covered by bone and other sides are it's covered by fascias it is intermuscular septum so they are tight if there is any collection inside like you know hematoma collection there is a possibility that the neurovascular and the muscles can go for compromised vascularity in turn there will be necrosis ischemias all this can you might lose the limb so you should be very very careful and you should be able to identify at the earliest so what are the findings of compartment and earliest uh, clinical sign is what is the earliest yeah. clinical sign of compartment yeah. syndrome is pain on passive stretching and you try to stretch the toes in the lower limb whenever there is a excessive pain on the compartment you can you there will be that is this earliest sign of compartment syndrome so that is very important to assess the vascularity in the lower limb okay and sometimes you know uh, your distal pulses can be absent can be absent because of the increased compartments proximal to the distal pulse okay like as you said the dorsal epidis please remember dorsal epidis pulse may be absent in a so around 15 to 20% of the patients that uh, dorsal epidis may be absent so definitive uh, pulse is posterior tibial artery okay posterior tibial artery where you want to identify where is the pulse you are feeling the pulse in between medial malleolus and the and the what is the other point point to identify it is in between the median malleolus and the calcaneum okay in between you can find the on the medial side so you can find the medial or posterior posterior tibial artery position okay right ravish continue Posterior at knee. He was operated on second day of admission. Uh, today is sixteen day of admission. Okay. And he complained of tingling sensation of right leg. Yes, sir. Tingling sensation of the right leg after sixteenth day. Why? What is the reason for this yes, tingling sir. sensation? He was all right. Sixteenth day of post op. Post op sixteenth day. today is the 16th day of admission okay second post operative duty so uh, what may be the reason for this tingling sensation in the right leg there oh, may sir, be because he was recently he, operated again okay? yeah second day it is the second day of post op isn't it so he he yes, he sir. underwent some surgery to the fracture and he was maybe he, i don't know what is the type of surgery he underwent it may be a open reduction and plate fixation or a nail into the intramed intramedullary nailing whatever procedure they have must have done there may be uh, hematoma formation in the proximal part of the leg and it might uh, it might uh, uh, cause some 
irritation to the nerves especially common peroneal nerve it might be this uh, reason for its tingling sensation okay or one more reason for its tingling sensation the amount of compression you, uh, post operatively our surgeon or our, your assistant is going to give to the leg that may be the one more reason for the uh, tingling sensation okay right proceed hello mr ravi sorry sir it was stopped sir yeah yeah there is some problem with your network yes sir yes sir yeah is it fine okay. now sir yeah yeah okay no right proceed so you understood now the reason for is tingling sensation in the leg there are two reasons one is post operatively there may be some hematoma compressing the uh, uh, adjacent nerve or maybe because of the your compression bandage which you are going to give apply to the uh, leg so that may be the reason for its tingling sensation as long as there is no motor disturbance you need not worry okay right proceed Uh, after clinical history and examination, uh, invest. I uh, there was investigation done as X-ray. Okay. And this is a plain X-ray. This is, this right is the pre. Yeah, this is the pre-operative X-ray, tibula, isn't it? In AP and lateral view, yeah. where there is, is the... fracture in uh, sac of the tibia. This is called comminuted fracture. Yes, it sir. is not Indeed. a only two fragment. There are multiple fragments which are seen there at the fracture site. It is called comminuted fracture. Okay, comminuted fracture, and but it is not very much displaced. It is fractured, but it is in the same place. So it is undisplaced one, comminuted undisplaced fracture of the upper end of the tibia, shaft of the tibia. Okay, is there fibula is also fractured here? Uh, no sir there is no fracture of the fibula yeah as as in your x ray you will not see any fracture of the fibula as such okay right proceed may I proceed sir yeah yeah proceed now you have to ask one more question here you have you are you are given X-ray leg. You have to ex you have examine the leg. You have to ask because it is a post-operative case. We don't know soon after the trauma what was the condition. There are two types of uh, fractures mainly in the at the time of trauma. One is open fracture. Another is a closed fracture. You should I I should ask you whether this fracture was a open fracture or a closed fracture. What is the difference between open and closed fracture? Uh, Ravi, uh, yes, sir. Hmm. You tell me the difference between the open fracture and closed fracture. Uh, sorry, sir, I could not answer my question. Listen the question, sir. Yeah. So now you have uh, X-ray here. Now you should find yes, out. Sir. Try to find out whether this fracture was open fracture or a closed fracture. What is the difference between these two? Uh, by open looking the soft tissue, sir. Yeah. Inspectory findings, you can find out whether was there any wound at the site of fracture. Was there any wound at the site of fracture in this case? You have to answer me. If there is a wound at the fracture site, that means that wound is communicating to the hematoma which was formed because of the fracture at the upper end of the tibia. So then the method of treatment always changes okay and the prognosis also changes okay tell me uh, uh, sorry sir i can 
No, no. Because if it is the fracture is open fracture or a closed fracture, was there any wound at the fracture site? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was, was it was wound? open fracture, sir. It was open fracture. So open fracture, the management entirely differs. Okay. And the prognosis of an open fracture is also changes. Okay. And when there is a open uh, fracture, if the whenever there is a wound at the fracture site, then you try to classify that fracture. Yes. Sir. As per Gustillo Anderson uh, classification. Okay. So whether the fractures, uh, the wound at the fracture site was small enough, like less than one centimeter, it is called type one. <coughs> Sorry. If the wound is more than one centimeter, it is called type two. Okay. If it is a, a wound which is communicating to the fracture site with the soft tissue, stripping of the soft tissues from the bone, it is called type three. In type 3, again A, B, C, isn't it? You can recollect your Gustillo Anderson classification of open wound. If there is a yes, uh, stripping, sir. yeah, if there is a stripping of the uh, periosteum, it is type uh, A, type 3 C, type 3 B. If there is a vascular injury along with that, then it is called type 3. C. Type 3 C is a most dangerous fracture where the chances of amputation of the um, fractured area is high. Okay. You should need to identify the vascular injury at the earliest. Okay. Right. So what you want to do? Now your diagnosis is very clear. It is a open fracture of the upper end of the shaft of the tibia, which is comminuted one. So how to manage this fracture? So management always uh, consists of investigation and treatment. Okay. You have to investigate in the, this case. As you, as you have done, you have done uh, x-ray of the affected limb. And whenever you are taking an x-ray, you need to include a joint above and joint below in that x-ray. So you have already uh, uh, taken the x-ray of the ankle, but I don't know whether you have included the knee joint in this case. Is it important? Ravi, is it important? Yes, sir. Whether to include the joint, adjacent joint in the x-ray is important? Yes, sir. It is very important. It is important sir. here. Okay. Because why? Yes, sir. Why? Because? Uh, because uh, the force may transmit from one point. Yeah. To there point may to be point. associated ligamental injuries or any fracture which might get extended to the joint. They are. These are all important. Okay, especially the fracture, whenever the fracture is very near to the joint. Okay, so you need to include the uh, knee joint in this x-ray. Okay, right. So, uh, any other investigation you would like to do here? Uh, yes, sir. I would like to, there was loss of consciousness for one hour as well. So, and there was yes. pain at bilateral age. So, I will send x-ray of the uh, bilateral end and uh, CT scan yes. of the head. Sure. CT scan of the skull is required here. Okay. To rule out any. Why you want to take a CT scan of the skull? To rule out any bleeding. Bleeding. Okay. Bleeding in the in, uh, any bleeding in the skull. Okay. So there may be some compression of the brain that, that has to be rolled out. Subdural hematoma, brachnoid hematoma, all these things are there. Okay. Right. So that is also not there. Then any, any investigation you would like to do? Uh, yeah. If there is any ligament injury, then I will be sending MRI, sir. 
MRI. M before MRI, if there is any doubt, because it is very near to the joint, you need to do a CT scan of the knee joint. So sometimes there may be an undisplaced fracture which is extending to the joint surface. So if that is the case, then you need to extend your fixation up to the joint. Okay. So CT scan is important. As you said, uh, you, you, to identify any uh, soft tissue trauma or ligamental injuries, you need to take MRI of the joint, adjacent joint here. Okay. Any uh, hematological investigation is important here? Uh, yes, sir, because it is proximal tibia fracture. So yeah, might and it is an open fracture. It was uh, uh, open for long, quite a long time, almost two weeks it was open, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, so the chances of infection, generalized infection, okay? That is also more common. So you need to do all the investigation to rule out infection at the site of the trauma and any uh, bacteremia should be ruled out. Like what are the investigation you'd like to do here? Sir, if there is any bacteremia, then I, have, I will be seen for call, sir. Yeah, total count, differential count. CRP, ESR, okay, and blood culture. Blood culture also can be done, but some majority of time blood culture will be negative because you already, whenever patient comes to you, you start your uh, law, uh, any law, uh, antibiotics, is it? it? Broad spectrum antibiotic usually starts. That's why your blood culture you, you will be usually negative. So your uh, diagnosis of uh, uh, septicemia or bacteremia will be by CRP, total count, differential count, and ESR. Okay? Right. And any other uh, investigations like your uh, cytologies, uh, any uh, other investigation to help and to give uh, Which is which is which will be helpful for the surgical point of view, pre anesthesia assessment. All these things you should need to perform. Even though he is eighteen year old, your uh, investigation should be for the pre uh, pre operative pre anesthesia checkup. It should be complete. Okay, right. And one more thing you must you must remember. As patient with the fracture of the proximal tibia comes to you, the first uh, examination should be distal neurovascular injuries. Okay, so whenever there is a proximal uh, fracture of the proximal part of the tibia, because your vessels, popliteal artery is and its division. Yeah of uh, tibial artery is very close to the proximal surface of the tibia. So whenever there is a fracture of the proximal part of the tibia and the posterior aspect, there is a possibility of injury to either popliteal artery or its branches like, like tibial artery. So you should be very careful and you should have an eye uh, on vascular injuries. Okay? Please remember this. Right. So what do you want to do now? Because you said what, why, did you know, do you know what, what is the type Gastillo Anderson uh, classification in this case? Uh, yes, sir. It because was great. Yeah. It was grade 3, yes, sir. Grade 3. Grade 3 means there are very clear. In a grade 1, you can do a debridement and do you can do a definite use uh, uh, fixation, internal fixation. In grade two also, if the wound is clean, you can do a primary debridement and you can fix it. If the grade three, there is no question of internal fixation because there is a stripping of the periosteum 
the uh, the soft tissue injury is such that the chances of infection if you do an internal fixation is very very high so you always try to do uh, external fixation you stabilize the jaw uh, fracture by external fixation in case of grade 3 mm -hmm. wounds okay grade 3 type of open fractures okay right okay now what is the method of uh, stabilization of the fracture in this case as you said it is a type 3 isn't it yes sir yeah Sorry. after after reduction of the fracture and then i will apply yes uh, uh, I will apply external fixator, sir. External fixator. Very good. Very good. External fix fixator after, is a... Yeah. Yes, Tell me. Uh, after... Because there was soiling and there was soft tissue injury as well. So initially, Correct. I will be um, managing through the uh, external fixator. And after decrease in, decrease in the soiling, then I will be proceeding for open reduction and internal fixation. Okay. So first is aim is to manage the, it is a uh, management of the soft tissues with the fracture, isn't it? So to manage the soft tissues, whenever there is an associated fracture is by external fixation so that the local um, uh, handling of the soft tissues from a soft tissue injuries will be easier whenever if you apply uh, external fixation and the chances of infection at the fracture site is less in case of external fixation application, okay? So once your soft tissue is clean, soft tissue is covered at the fracture site, you can remove the external fixator, wait for the pin track to heal, and you can do a definite internal fixation either by using intramedullary nail or a extramedullary plating can be done in this case, okay? So that is a method of treatment in this case, okay? Yeah. So with, the, with this type of open fractures, what are the complications you can expect? So you, uh, you must know because every case you you cannot anticipate 100% result, isn't it? So you need to anticipate complications. So what are the common complications of type 3 open fractures? Yes, sir. Um, there might yeah. be infection. There might be... Infection, infection is the most important one. Very good. Okay. Uh, if the bleeding is severe, then, then there might be... Uh, an hypovolemic shock. Yeah, and sometimes, sometimes. Okay, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. And there might be injury to common peroneal nerve. Common peroneal because see that uh, your uh, uh, combination is on the anterolateral and post lateral and anterolateral part of the leg. So where the uh, common peroneal nerve also comes there, it comes from the posterior to anterior, isn't it? So the chances of uh, common peroneal nerve is also there. Okay, good. Anything else? Uh, yes, sir. There might be uh, uh, osteomyelitis as well, sir. If in the oh, yeah. It is infection. Following that, it can go for osteomyelitis. Anything else? To the fracture uh, yes, per, per se? One is infection. There might be there might be deep vein thrombosis. Deep vein thrombosis. Agreed. Long-term complications here? A long term, there might be uh, there mal, mal union, non union, delay. No, there's a possibility of non union in this case because your uh, hematoma is drained out, it is open, there's a chance possibility of infection at the fracture site. So, that all these things can lead to, and there is a soft tissue stripping at the fracture site. So, all these things can lead to non union. If there is infection, then it can, it can have an infected non-union at the fracture side. Okay? As I yeah. said, it is osteomyelitis. It can go for... If the osteomyelitis happens at the fracture side, it is called... 
it is called infected non union if usually when there is infection at the fracture site it goes for non union chances of union is delayed so it is called infected non union okay right yeah anything else can you yeah, get a shorting shorting of the limb yes sir possibility possibility is there or not in this case yes sir if the if your fracture uh, there is lateral angulation uh, in this yeah way. here there is a so much of combination at the fracture site they if as you said it is a open fracture there is a possibility that the infection at the fracture site so it can go for osteomyelitis all these small small fragments which are devoid of soft tissue coverage can go for ischemias yes sir you divide up blood vessels blood blood circulations they can go for sequestrum isn't it sequestrum yes, and they lose the, it's a, it's a, uh, growing potentialities and they will just become a nuisance or foreign body at the fracture site causing infection isn't it so there is a possibility that all these things can go for sequestration of these all these uh, small fragments of the bones which are devoid of blood supply <coughs> sorry so there is a possibility of shorting of the limb non union infected non union sh shorting okay all these things are complications of the fracture site okay right okay so what is the advantage of fibula being not fractured in this case as i said there is no fibula fracture is it it so what is the advantage there may be there's a possible this is this is in in, in it fact it is a spring as well sir pardon it can act as a spring uh, role as ah, well. yeah it, it it can act as a splintage so that you can maintain the length and it can be it can support the fracture tibia one and one more uh, uh, complication rather it is a disadvantage is whenever there is a fibula fra not fractured the fractured tibia will not get approximated because fibula is intact so this tibia can go for increased chance of non union okay that's a disadvantage of fibula being not fractured sometimes whenever you you, will, you have a delayed union or a non union of the tibia we sometimes we do an osteotomy of the fibula so that the union at the fracture of the tibia gets hastened so you need to have some compression at the fracture site then only you can have union at the fracture site okay so that is a disadvantage of fibula being not fractured okay it has got advantage as well as disadvantage okay okay anything else you want to know what is the prognosis of this uh, open fracture type 3 for fracture Pro, uh, type 3 open fractures it is poor sir we have, might go for amputation amputation as well sir. not way okay depends on the amount of soft tissue injuries okay whenever when, whenever there is a soft tissue injuries facio cutaneous uh, uh, soft tissue injury it might have gone for necrosis so how will you reconstruct your facio cutaneous flaps in the leg you need to do a plastic procedures plastic procedures some yeah some uh flap coverage okay flap coverage you should do so that the fractured bones are not exposed to the exterior once it gets exposed to the exterior for long time beyond 72 hours that bone becomes avascular whenever there is no soft tissue coverage to any bone 
beyond 72 hours, the possibility of that bone going for necrosis is very, very high. Okay. So that's why at the earliest you try to cover any exposed fractured bone by facial cutaneous or muscular flaps. Okay. There comes the cooperation of the plastic surgeons with the trauma surgeons. Okay. Yes. Anything else if you want to tell, uh, know, you tell me, I'll answer you. Huh? Good presentation. You have prepared well. Okay. Very nice. And anything if you want to know, you tell me. Ask me, I'll definitely answer. Hmm? So it's the most important. Usually in your exams, you won't get, see here what they have done. They have done. Uh, external fixator fixation at the in the uh, uh, first stage so that they can cover and can ma manage the soft tissues at the fracture site. In a secondary procedure, they have done open reduction and internal fixation with a plate. It is a, a hockey stick plate on the okay. lateral okay. side with a MIPO technique. Report technique means you are not trying to touch at the fracture site. You are fixing at the proximal and distal part of the fracture so that you are not handling this uh, fracture site. So chances of infection, chances of a vascular compromise at the fracture site are very less. And medially, they have you, uh, applied a small plate so that they can maintain the length of the fracture as well as shape of the uh, bone can be maintained well. Okay, very nice fixation they have done. Only thing is, they should not be, it should not get infected. Okay, the soft tissue coverage, especially the flap, even if at all if they have done a flap, that it should survive so that uh, his limb is saved and the fracture side gets united. Okay, as patient is a young patient the chances of this fracture getting united is very, very high. Okay. So, nice one. And uh, as I was telling, uh, any open fractures, the chances of uh, infection, non-union, non infected non-union is very high. The early uh, soft tissue coverage and stabilization is most important. And you can't make the limb immobilized for a long time. So here the uh, mobilization of the knee joint and ankle joint is also important here so that you can give a functional leg to the patient. Main major important thing is you need to give a useful extremity to the patient after your surgical procedure. Okay? Right. Okay. Anything else you can ask me? Otherwise, we can close down. All these things is X-rays. You are on a survey of the X-rays, isn't it? Was there any fracture yeah. there? No, sir. There was any fracture. Yeah, no fracture. And chest there is also there. important. Whenever there is a uh, polytrauma case, chest X-ray is most important to identify any collection in the chest cavity. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, good. Hmm? Good. All the best. All the best.